must say to you that how also myself I came here because I don't, I was not born here, you know. Yes. I was born in Piraeus. Then my first loves, it was exactly Africa. And also it was the university. I was professor of the University of Athens for 20 years. And in the World Council of Churches, I was the moderator for mission and evangelism. Then all this experience were used here. Of course, we know about the religious persecutions that we had in the 20th century, started in Russia and after in the whole Balkans. The case of Albania is unique. From the end of the Second War, 1944, until the 67, everything was the typical persecution that we had in all the other countries. It was uh, against, of course, the government, but it was always something remaining from the structure of the church. But after 1967, when Albania broke any relation with Russia and the others, and they came the Chinese, they decided to do something original, as they said, to abolish absolutely religion. And then, by official constitution of the country, it was prohibited any religious expression in the country. This is unique in the world history. Always we had persecutions, but always we had something that remained here. Then that means for the 24, from 67 to 90, it was absolute silence here. Even a small icon, a small book, a small part of the egg, red egg, was enough to send the whole family to exile and many times also to death. Then that means everything was demolished. All, the majority of the churches were destroyed. They changed some of them for different other, for making depots, for... But only some of the old cultural uh, tradition remained. Then this is something unique. I must say that during this period, myself, I was professor of the University of Athens for history of religions. And many of us, we thought that in Albania, the church was destroyed fully, as it happened previous for the Persian church. Then it was in 1990 when we have the change also in Russia. And also here, they understood that they cannot continue. This time, personally, I was in Africa. I would like to express to you, to explain to you that uh, we had a special interest, even from the time of 60s, in the Orthodox youth, in the pan-Orthodox organization called Syndesmos, we had a discussion how the Orthodox, they didn't have in the 20th century missions in foreign countries. And we have created a team, a center, with the name Paul Fendes, Gohi, in order to have a rekindling of Orthodox mission in New Frontiers. Then this period, Africa was in the middle of the interest. And we started this effort. We started also to, to show that it was not an influence of the Western churches, but it was the rediscovery of our own Orthodox tradition. Speaking about Cyril and Methodios, the Byzantine missions, and after the Russian missions, with Inokendi Veniaminov, with Nikolai Kazatkin. And you know that the first uh, articles that I published in Greece was exactly about these missionaries in, in Greece and in English. And it was a moving for us, it was an inspiration. When we started to think about mission, uh, I insisted that what is mathematics for physics is history of religion for mission. We must study the others carefully. Because this God of the universe did not live without witness his presence to the other people. This is written clearly in the Acts of the Apostles. Then immediately, 
when, because our interest was Africa, it was to study the African religiosity. I had a difficulty when, for the first time, I, I was in Africa. I got malaria, and I was obliged to come back to Europe. But during the postgraduate studies in Europe, in Germany for four years, my studies were for history of religions, research for the African religiosity, and also study of the modern uh, issues of Christian mission. Then my research and my dissertation was for African religions. When I started to teach in the university, of course, since my love and my research was about Africa, I tried to, to give many lectures about these uh, results of my studies. But I was obliged to speak about the other religions, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, and generally, the, the other of the past and of the present. Then I discovered that we didn't have a good book for Islam. Perhaps it was a strange situation in Greece that it was a type of taboo. There were a lot of tracts, polemical, against, but not a serious description. What is exactly this? And then I spent enough years to study and to write a book about Islam that it was for my students in 76. But after has more than one, uh, 16 new editions, and although it is in Greek, more than 100,000 well distribution. Then I believe that it was important and also for the dialogue with other people. When you have a dialogue with some other, you must know who is the other. Not to create a caricature about the other and to make different announcements but to express to the other what is exactly. He says this respect for the other, not ridiculate or undermine, and of course, see what are the possibilities for a coexistence, peaceful coexistence and harmony. You know, the, this was my sacrifice when I came here because I was not able anymore to, to continue with research and uh, studies. When, in the 91, personally I was in Nairobi, I received a telephone from the Ecumenical Patriarchate that, congratulations, you were appointed to go as an exarch. This is an ecclesiastical term, means a type of ambassador, to Albania to examine what happens there. I said, well, with Albania I don't have anything to do. I don't know the language, I don't have any real experience. But it happened also, many say, many times we say it happens, but it is in the God's, let us say, provision. I was the moderator of the Commission on World Mission Evangelism of the World Council of Churches. And in 1989, in San Antonio, Texas, when we spoke about the difficulties of Christians around the world, it was the first time that I spoke about Albania, because we had now South Africa that was in the middle of the interest, but Albania was the only case where no possibility even to have an icon. And it was strange how this moderator, he's from Greece, speaks about Albania. Then it was a surprise for me, but I accepted. But in order to come here, I have to wait seven months to take a visa. And the visa was only for one month. Then, I came here for the first time in 1991, July, in the middle of the, of the month. And of course, this was a village here in the airport, a small aeroplane, and a small group of people that were without rasho, tired, old, ill, but with an expectation. And we went to the church that this was. Did you visit Evangelismos, I think? The, the old church that we went to. Yeah, this was Jim during the period of, uh, of the persecution. And I remember that uh, my first phrase that I learned in Albania was this one. I asked somebody, how do you say Christ is risen? He told me. I said, take a candle. They received the candle. And the first words were Christi Ungala, that means Christ is risen. And all these simple people that I to cry 
because this was what they all read. Then my first year was not as an archbishop. I came only to see, and to report, and to go on. But I saw really the disaster of the, of the whole country. The whole country was, you see, full with this bunker. Do you know the bunkers of, that was against, let us say, Italy and Greece, because they had the fear that something can happen. And it was a real enthusiasm of the same people that something comes again. And this was, let us say, the main phrase for the whole effort, Christ's reason. Although it was uh, crucified and uh, in the tomb for 24 years. Uh, then when I came here, I was only metropolitan professor at the University of Athens. Many people that they don't love to speak about your, well, uh, the ecclesiastical terms, they said to me, professor. I said, fine, professor. But it was something that you can a little understand, a cloud of suspicion. I was already quite old. I was 62. Then for many people, it was strange. A person that we know that he has already an academic uh, career, that he is a candidate for the Academy of Athens, that he has uh, international acknowledgement uh, uh, places. Why he comes here? What is behind all this? It is political interest from this, from the other. It was difficult, you see, to persuade the other people about your sincerity. Even some friends, they propose and they buy for me a special car that was protected. I never use this because I said, if I go there and I give the impression that something strange happens, then I cannot work as, as, an, as, a, as a bishop. I tried myself to reconcile with this suspicion and to say, Anastasi, the people that from the nursery until to university, they have learned that there is no God, and especially there is no God of love. But everything has to do with conflict and with other interest. How they will accept that you came here because you believe to this God of love and because you love them. It is very difficult for them. Accept that they have difficulties, go on in your work, and of course, you will see. And uh, I think that, thanks God, I had to wait 25 years to receive even the citizenship. But everything you see in the Balkans goes a little slow. When they asked me to come, nobody told me that you will have a team of people, this, this, this. You will have a budget, this, this, this. Uh, and they said, do you like to go? The first answer was, let us think. My friends, they told me, don't make the mistakes to stay there. Nothing is possible. Everything is against. You don't have the possibilities. But you see, many times, this decision has to do with personal prayer and uh, obedience. When uh, you are devoted to the church, when you give the whole life to Christ, uh, the problem is not always to say, I prefer this, I prefer this. Then you are ready to accept with obedience if the church has a need. And since this was a demand that the others insisted for me, that I am the person that I have to, to go in this difficult effort, I said, well, you have to obey, to accept. And until this time, my experience was that the whole life was under, under the blessing and the presence of the, of the Spirit. Then I had to obey and to... I said, well, we shall do. The result is not in my own possibilities. The result is in the hands of God. And then it was, uh, how do you say, to accept in faith and in patience what is the will of God. Uh, also, because the financial difficulty, we didn't have any budget. Then, uh, uh, but thanks God we started. During the previous period, let us say from the 60s to 90s, uh, 
trying to study more carefully and to create, let us say, a theory about how is the, the principles for the Orthodox mission. I had three main uh, principles as basic. First, everything must be done in the local languages. For instance, in Africa, immediately we translate in the local dialects the whole liturgy. Everything must be in prayer and in books and in generally catechism in the local language. Second, creation of local leadership, not only priests but also lay persons and lay women who will continue and try to have an autonomy in order to survive. In Africa the situation were different. Here the situation was different. And, but immediately uh, we use these principles. Everything was done here in the majority because the church the majority are Albanians in Albania, south where they, we have a lot of Greek uh, villages and uh, towns in Greek. In north we have the Slavonic with uh, uh, people from uh, the other countries. We have also some other small groups, but everything we accepted the differences. And we said, keep your personality. Even we accepted the old calendar and the new calendar. We said twice to celebrate Christmas. Never mind. Then this was the first. Second, it was immediately the effort to, even when I was an exarch, to start a seminary for having the possibility to have local people as priests. We didn't have money, we didn't have uh, lots. Even we rent a hotel in Duras and we started there. And thanks God, difficulties, of course, difficulties. No electricity, no good food, no, uh, well, secure finance and so on. And uh, after, uh, I think that you visited uh, St. Vlas. And now we have also is it was, everything was ruined there. Everything that you saw, it is new. I think that you receive a lot of photographs and other videos, but all are new. Thanks God, until now, we have ordained more than 160 priests. Many of them, some of them are already dead, but we have uh, a, a real uh, local leadership. We have also the uh, bishops, metropolitans, who were born here. The third that you said was a great difficulty, the financial. Because the people here, they were very poor. It was not possible to use the models that we have in other churches, that the parish will support the priest. Because nobody would accept to be in poverty during this new period if he's not sure. And I had also to give the promise to the priests that they will have a serious salary, like professors in gymnasium or in Lyceum. And this was in the beginning more easy because it was here very low, the whole salaries. But I had also to provide, to ask other people to help us. Then I joke sometimes that many, many times uh, I would like to make a card and say, Archbishop so-and-so, Emeritus Professor so-and-so, member of the Academy so-and-so, international beggar. Because I had to go to all my friends around the world in the World Council of Churches, in America, in Greece, in Australia, and so on, to, to have the possibility to say, we have this plot, can you help? We must build the church, can you help? And of course, you know that nobody opens the... Uh, and comes money. You have to persuade, you have to give the, all the uh, evidence that everything is used in the right way. Here we lived in the most simple way, uh, in uh, Papa Fingo, uh, in, in order to participate in the simple life of the people here. When the people are poor, you cannot be like a rich person here. Thanks God. Uh, it was also the love of the people that uh, gave more strength. And uh, I remember in the beginning when, uh, uh, after the first year that I was an expert, they asked me, if I shall accept to become Archbishop here. And I had great dilemmas. Many of the groups of the, of some of the women there asked me, all these years we have prayed that somebody comes to love us and to help us. Now do you live? <laughs> you see, there are 
critical details in our life that uh, influence our decisions. You know, already now I am 26 years. In the last years, many people they said, well, fine, now he's Archbishop Anastasius and tries to solve these problems. But after him, I said a moment, always God is here, the head of the church. He will provide. But always I had in the, in the back of my mind what we shall have as a basic for financial autonomy. We try to buy something. It was very difficult. Personally, I don't like to become somebody who rents apartments for the others. It is very dangerous. And thanks God, a friend of mine gave the idea why you don't try to make something with the water, with the rivers. And then we created this unit that really is according to all the environmental criteria. And he gave us the possibility to continue at least for the liturgical uh, expenses and also for the effort of education. Because you know, it is not, you know some statistics, I don't like to repeat numbers now. It was not only the effort that we started to build churches, 180 new churches, big and small uh, chapels also to repair the others, 150, and about 70 old uh, monuments. This was one part, but also the other part was immediately to try to have an effort for the education. We have already 30 schools, from nurseries to the university college. Uh, after we started the clinic, we started also the, uh, for the orphanage. We don't call him this orphanage, we call Stupi uh, Express, that means uh, House of Hope. Then, now we have also for the old people, all this needs money. Always I insist that in order to be a real Orthodox Christian, you must offer to the Church, not only to have a candle. But it is not enough. And by this way now, we have the possibility to cover the liturgical expenses. Perhaps they will not have the possibility to build something very important for the future, but nevertheless now we have a basis and we have an independent, you know, here we are a minority. We don't have the state to help us. We have other people, it is about 20, 22% of the population. And the other difficulty is that many of the young people, they leave the country. Then we had to find solutions. And always have to do with young people. In the university, I have to do with young students. Then. And when I came here, I, gave, I said, let us help the young that I are seeking. And they are in a vacuum. They came from the illusion of the communist paradise. They go to the new illusion of the capitalist paradise. In between, there is a vacuum. Then, what is the answer? It is to offer the Orthodox Christian perspective of life. And we started like this one. And you heard perhaps a phrase that I repeat, that in the Church of Albania, the youth is not only the future, but it is the presence. We continue this. And you know also something? There is a rule that I, I left for my successors, because of course, I am now, uh, well, in the sunset of my own work here. The obligation is that at least a percentage, until 5%, we shall give to other churches more poor than we in Africa. And we started already, or in Korea, or I don't know why. I would like to insist, uh, Dimitri, in the idea that uh, something that even in one article of the 64 I wrote for the first time, that the Orthodox Church is not a federation of local churches, but it is the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church and has the presence and the appearance in the different local places. Then we are one. Of course, other was born here or in other places, but we are one. Then the joys and the pains of every part of this Orthodox Church is ours. And this is this must also be expressed with concrete structures. And I believe many times all these things 
are not, let us say, financial ideas, are theological thinking and preaching that has expression in concrete structures. Uh, and this is one of my, well, great pains for the future. More unity of the Orthodox Church in all the levels, more love and respect, and also a dynamic presence in the modern world. We are not a museum of the past. Many times they speak about the beauty of the icons of the art, fine, of the music, excellent. But we have a role now. Your generation, the next generation has other problems, different than our own generation. And then we must have an orthodoxy that sees in the future, not behind. And also another idea that many times we insist is our church in which we belong, Everything that, everything that it has is not only for herself or itself, but it's for the whole humanity. Everything that we have, we have to offer. We receive more love from Christ, we have to offer. We receive more grace from Him, we have to offer. We have more dynamism from Him, we have to offer. And this is exactly our vision for the future. This is the beautiful and powerful orthodoxy that radiates not only the light of the cross, but also the light of the resurrection. I believe that when we speak about theology, our theology must not be an abstract, let us say, effort of ideas and a language that only another theological understand, theologians understand, but must be, must have always the sources from the pastoral experience, from the missionary experience. The New Testament, what is exactly? It is not Aristotelian, let us say, uh, writing. It is, it is something, it was the letters of a missionary, of an apostle. Then, this is the, a living theology, and at the same time, everything that we do in pastoral and missionary effort must have a theological thinking. Nothing from this that we said before was only, let us say, a good manager. No. It was a theologian who asked always God, help me for the right uh, thoughts, for the right, right estimation, for the right decisions, for the right acts. Then this is our orthodox tradition. It is biblical uh, and also it is patristic. And this is a spirituality, not an abstract spirituality, but for everything small, we ask, Lord, help us to see what is your will in this concrete situation. What was more difficult for you to bring, uh, to bring the Christianity, the uh, light of uh, gospel to African people um, with um, pa pagan spirituality or to atheistic country? What is more difficult for me, Shania? You know, my, my concern and respect and love for Africa goes because really Africa is under injustice, poverty and difficulty. And I say that for us, we go there that there is injustice to bring the gospel of hope, of justice, solidarity and love. In Africa there is too much poverty, of course. Even something that is simple for us, we drink water. There, to find water, to drink water, is a whole effort to open well and so on. Then I believe that the most important is not what we say, but how they say that we live. And of course, we have to offer from the beginning the gospel to explain to them that this supreme reality is not somebody strange, but it is the God of love. And in order to live in Him, we must live in love. Then this is the main message. The people of different languages, they understand the language of love. With then this was in Africa. Here was a suspicion and a rejection of all this theory. I remember one of the most first discussion with a member of the parliament. He was professor here when I came for the first year. He studied in, in France and he told me, uh, je suis athée, professor. I said to him, no, 
you know, you use a, a word, a te, that it is a Greek one, but you don't use it the right one. You are not atheist, but you don't like to belong to a religious community. God is more near to you than you are thinking, and you are more near to him than you are thinking. And this was a bridge. Not to say, well, fine, you are this, you are... And tell me, what is the atheist at the end? Everybody searches for something. They have longing for something. Everybody longs for understanding, for more truth, for more love, for more meaning of life. Then there are people that they reject the proposal that the Church offers about who is the supreme reality that is the God of love. We don't have to be in conflict with them. We have to be near them. Even I can say to you something. I know here and in Greece and in other countries, people that are, that are in the leadership. And they selected to say that, well, we don't believe. I say to them, you see, Mr. So and so, I don't like to, to make mention, uh, names that are known. Since you don't pray because you say that you don't believe, I am obliged to pray for you. And you know what, at the end, he said, don't forget to pray for me. You don't know how every human person lives and in what relation he is with God. And for this reason I say, never an aggression against anybody, a respect for every human being. This radiates something. The others, they are quite clever to understand what is methodical and, and what is sincere. And I believe that the others are in the hands of God. Every human person is free to select and to decide. But we have to radiate this spirit of respect, of love and of hope. I call this spirit of the cross and of the resurrection.